Installing an additional Active Directory domain controller. In the previous video, we installed our first Active Directory domain controller, and in many small companies, often they just leave it at the one domain controller. But in reality, for both performance and redundancy reasons, you should shoot for a minimum of two domain controllers. Now in larger companies or geographically dispersed companies, you'll definitely want multiple domain controllers and probably multiple domains. So in this video, we're going to see how we can install another domain controller into our parent domain, winstructorlab.com. So even though we've talked about this in previous videos, let's recap why we'd want to install two domain controllers into the same domain. While there are a lot of reasons why two domain controllers has benefits, the first being that in the event that one of them goes down, if the other is still up, it can service requests. This also means that when you need to administratively take a domain controller offline, possibly for maintenance or hardware upgrades or for whatever the reason, your users remain unaffected. From a performance perspective, if you have a lot of users, a second domain controller can also pick up the load and that's going to make requests faster for your users. And of course, what about your company from a geographical perspective? Just because you might only have a single domain, if you have lots of sites within that domain that are stretched over slow WAN links, you'll want a domain controller to be local to your users to service logon requests for replicated data and so forth so users don't saturate the WAN link and experience long delays trying to accomplish tasks that rely on Active Directory. Now in our current structure that we built in the previous video, we have one domain controller called DC01 which is installed into a domain called winstructorlab.com. So we'll be building upon what we started by adding a new domain controller to our existing network. So let's get started and install our second domain controller. So to install our new domain controller, we'll need to fire up the server manager by clicking the little gray server icon here in the quick launch area. Then in the left hand side of the server manager console, we'll select roles. And in the right hand side, we'll click on add roles. And this will start up the add role wizard. So we'll click next and we'll choose the second option again, Active Directory domain services, and then click next. And we'll get our little summary page telling us what Active Directory domain services is for. So let's just click next. And we'll get another message here telling us that we may need to restart our server after the installation of Active Directory is complete. And of course, like before, we're also going to need to run the DC promo tool after this wizard completes in order to finalize the installation of Active Directory. And we've seen this before, so we'll click on install. And then the Active Directory domain services role will begin installing. Now, like before, this is going to take a while, so we'll pause the video here and we'll return once the wizard's complete. Okay, the installation has finished and we're again reminded that we will need to run the DC promo tool to complete this installation of Active Directory. So we'll click close and then we'll go and click on start and we'll type in DC promo and hit enter. And that's gonna start up our Active Directory domain services wizard. And again, we have the option of using the advanced mode for installation. So let's check this box this time and we'll click next. We'll get our little warning message. We've seen that before, we'll click next. Okay, now like before, we have two options. Do we wanna create a domain controller for a forest that already exists? Or will this be a new domain in a new forest? Now in our previous video, we've already installed the winstructorlab.com forest. So this server will be part of that forest. So we're going to choose the top option, an existing forest. And then, of course, we'll choose the second option here to add a domain controller to an existing domain. But our other option here is to create a new domain in an existing forest. And we'll talk about that in the next video where we'll create a new child domain. So we'll select add a domain controller to an existing domain and we'll click next. And now we'll need to enter in the name of the domain that this new domain controller is going to be part of. So that will be winstructorlab.com. 
Now also note here in the middle that we have a warning message here telling us that our account that we're currently logged on with is local to this computer and that's DCO2 slash administrator. So obviously, since I'm logged onto this server using the local administrator's account, this server isn't yet part of any domain. Since that's the case, in order to add this server to our existing domain structure, we'll need to click on the set button and then enter in the username and password for an account that does have the correct permissions. So I'm going to use the administrator's account and you can see down here that that's going to be the administrator account from the winstructorlab.com domain. And we'll enter in the password for that account and we'll click on OK. And then we'll click Next. Now we'll need to select which domain this new domain controller is going to become part of. Now, as you can see here, we only have one domain at this time, and that's the forest root domain winstructorlab.com. However, if we'd added additional child domains, we'd see more domains listed here. So simply select the one that you want this new domain controller to become part of. Since we only have the one, we don't need to select anything here. We'll just click Next. All right, now we'll need to select a site for our new domain controller. And since we only have the one default site in our domain, we will be defaulting to the default first name site. And we are going to cover sites in later videos. So there's nothing to select here. So we'll just move along by clicking next. Okay, now we can select what additional options we want to install on this domain controller. As you can see, DNS is already selected. I'm going to leave that selected since it's a good idea to have a backup DNS server as well. But we can also install the global catalog service on this domain controller as well if we like. And for now, I'm going to leave it selected and we'll talk more about the global catalog in another video. And finally, we could also choose to create a read-only domain controller, which we're also going to cover in another video. So for now, we'll click Next. Okay, now, when we create this new domain controller inside our existing domain, all of that domain's directory data will need to be replicated to this new server that we're building. So we've got two ways that we can replicate this data we could choose to replicate the data from an existing domain controller over the network, or we could replicate it from media. Now, replicating from media will require you to have created all of the replication data from the other domain controller and then brought it over to this new server using a DVD or some other media source. And whilst we'll stick with the first option, the second option of using media is pretty useful if this domain controller is sitting at the other end of a slow link. That way, we could dump all of the domain data to media, send it to the other site, and then restore it locally to save time and bandwidth. But since we're sitting on the same local network, we're going to leave the default to replicate over the network, and we'll click Next. OK, so now we'll need to configure which domain controller will be that replication partner for the installation of our new domain controller. Now, we could either let the wizard choose an appropriate domain controller for us, or we could specify one from the list below if we have a lot of domain controllers to choose from. And that's probably what you'll want to do if you have a lot of them, select one manually. Now, since I only have the one domain controller, it really doesn't matter what I select here, as either of these two settings is going to use our domain controller here called DCO1. So we'll just click Next. OK, now we'll need to specify where we want our database folder, the log files folder, and the sysfile folder to be installed. And like we learned in the previous video, for best performance, it's recommended that these things are stored on a separate fault tolerant volume, particularly the database and the log files. But again, since this is a lab, we're OK to install them in these default locations. So we'll just click Next. And now we'll set our administrator password, which we're going to use if we need to restore our system by booting into directory services restore mode. So we're going to enter in our password twice here and we'll click next. All right, well, we'll get our summary of what we're about to do, which is to create a new domain controller in the winstructorlab.com domain. So review this information to ensure that you've got all of the configuration down correctly. And then we'll click next and the installation will begin. 
Now, as we saw in the previous video, this is going to take a while and it will require our server to be restarted. So we're going to pause the video here and we'll return once it's complete. Okay, the installation is complete. This server is now another Active Directory domain controller in our existing winstructorlab.com domain. So we'll click finish and then we'll need to restart our server. Okay, so in this video, we've seen how to create an additional domain controller for our existing domain. And that, of course, is going to help us with both performance and redundancy. So we hope you enjoyed this video and would like to thank you for